Okay, private business number 12, adjourn debate on motion of the Honourable T. A. Franks. Uh, call the Honourable Ms. Burke. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise to confirm that Labor supports this motion in its entirety. This government has shown nothing but contempt for the parents, staff and especially the students of the inner southern suburbs since coming to office. It is important that we look back and reflect on how each party has approached and supported this community. As we all know, history will shed light on, on why today's decisions are being made. Springbank Secondary College, formerly Pasadena High School, has a proud history of serving the community since 1964, when it was opened as Dawes, Dawes Road High School, a proud public school community. In 2016, the School Governing Council decided to undertake a voluntary amalgamation process, a process enshrined in legislation to stop governments forcibly closing public schools left, right and centre. As was seen when the Liberal Party was last in government and overseen by a certain Minister for Education who sits in this chamber today, the Treasurer, the Honourable Rob Lucas. Mr President, after going through this process and assessing all the options, a vote was held in 2016 and the parents of Pasadena High School voted to keep the public school open. Deciding to seek the assistance of the Labor government of the day to help the school and its community grow and prosper. In response to this decision, one owed by the, owned by the community, the then Labor government set about investing in the school. It did this for a num in a number of ways. Resources and central, central support were provided to build links with other educational in institutions such as the Australian Science and Mathematics School and Flinders University. A name change and community promotion campaign commenced as a vision for the future began to emerge, all owed by its owned by its students and the community the school served. The following year, the then Labor government provided additional support, ensuring the school's long-term future by investing $10 million for building the classrooms and building upgrades around the school, especially along with the specialist learning areas to modernise the public school facilities. The construction work was due to begin this financial year, and I understand some site preparation work had already commenced. But, unfortunately, this is where the lessons of history come back to play. The tales of the Liberal government's agenda to close almost 50 public schools when they were last in government, a process overseen by the now Treasurer, the Honourable Rob, Rob Lucas. It took less than a year for the Marshall Liberal government to continue their crusade against the public school assets. Moves that again show the Liberal Party's view on public education in South Australia. Deep cuts to the department, zone changes, underfunding their only education policy of moving year sevens into high school and a, sh and a short changing of infrastructure projects in dozens of public schools were implemented. It, qu it quickly became clear the Marshall Liberal government's complete lack of vision for the future of South Australia's public schools. Then last year, we had this shock announcement that the Minister for Education wanted to close another public school, Springbank Secondary College. Just months earlier, the Marshall Liberal government informed families previously zoned to the Adelaide High School that Springbank was one of the schools they would be sending their, their children to. Mr President, this was all after, only a couple of years earlier, the then Liberal opposition demanding that the Labor government guarantee schools remain open, that, that this school remain open if it so wished to. The Friends of the Springbank Secondary College and the Save Springbank campaign, along with the member for Badco, the, um, Ms Jane Stinson, are calling for the school to remain open. The $10 million promised to the school by the previous Labor government to be spent on the planned improvements to the school. A shared school zone to provide parents and carers the choice about which school is right for their child. The local council, the city of Mitcham, has universally supported this ple th these pleas. 
We thank them for their leadership. A shared school zone is of particular merit. Certainly, we have shared school zones in other parts of the state. Spring Springbank and Unley are clearly quite different schools, especially in terms of the size, but also in terms of focus. And this is an important factor for any parent. As I look around this chamber, this is a decision most of us have been required to make. What is the right school for our children? It is a decision that can be a difficult one to make. Indeed, for the 50 odd students in the disability unit, the difference between the Unley High and the Springbank critical is crucial for the parents who do make this choice. Establishing a shared school zone is a sensible approach to safety, uh, to satisfying those locally zoned families who believe Unley High is better suited to their children's needs, but also to meet the needs of those who believe Springbank is the better option for their child. It's a win-win. And we'd very strongly urge the government to look at this option. If their intention is about providing quality education rather than closing a school to save money or even make money from the sale of the land. The local MP for a large section of the Springbank school zone, the member for Badco, Ms Jane Stinson, has been actively, thoroughly and genuinely consulting her constituents as well, um, as those in the Elder, Unley and Waite area, about the impact of this closure. The member from the other place, the member for Babco, has achieved this by attending several public meetings and holding her own community meetings and, in more recent times, Zoom meetings. The member for Babco and the Labor opposition have also sought the community's views through a survey and directly speaking with hundreds of local residents. It is a terrible shame that even though the member for Badco clearly has direct interest in this matter as an elected representative for many existing and prospective families attending the school, to the best of my knowledge, no one from the government has contacted the member for Badco, not even a phone call about the government's plans to shut down one of the local high schools in the community she has been elected to represent. It's one of the many signs that this government is not serious about community consultation. It, if it can't reply to one letter or pick up the phone to the local MP. It is really disappointing. This community deserves better. They deserve to know about important decisions before the media does. They deserve for, to hear from uh, informed decisions from all of their local MPs, not just the Liberals. They deserve a say in what the future of their education looks like. And most of all, they deserve a chance to grow their school and see it flourish. That is why Labor is supporting this motion and will continue to support the Springbank Secondary College community in their fight to keep this school open.